Greetings, hi, the War Owl greets you, and welcome to another episode of Matchmaking Academy, where you are the star for all the wrong reasons, but don't worry, we're gonna figure out what those reasons are and help you improve at Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Our hero today is who? Apparently he's a dinosaur. Seriously, guys? And his favorite fish is the Goblin Shark. <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. Jaws is fake. That thing is real, okay? Now, keep in mind, don't make any disparaging comments about this player. He's a legendary eagle master player. The two. He sent in this demo to learn a little bit more about how to push B on a pistol round, as you can see him attempting to do over and over again here. Now, as you can see, oh my gosh, what a new! Call the Mets. Call the Mets. Tell them they have their new Don Giovanni. Now a lot went wrong on this round, starting with the buy. If you'll notice, every single player on their team purchases up armor. Nobody goes for utility, nobody decides to play support. One player should have purchased a flash, maybe a P250, and a smoke, or double flash. Many different ways you could do it, but just having a little bit of utility would have helped big time in pushing into this site. Now, his question was, how do I push into bomb site B? We'll hop in game in just a second and talk about a flash he could have thrown and maybe even a smoke he could have thrown, but first, check this out. We have the terrorists, three players kind of pushing into bomb site B. You don't want to push in here if you don't even have the bomb with you. Notice that the bomb is pushed out at fountain with this other guy. That's not good. Even if they were able to take B, kill these three guys, um, then what? The bomb has to try and rotate and find his way over there or turn back and try to come back and uh, enter into the site. Notice there's just a little bit of lack of communication and yes, this can happen inside of Solo. Q. However, you have to make the difference. You gotta say, okay, let's not push in here until the bomb gets here. Just because the bomb went the other way, I mean, the whole round isn't completely over. You just won't be able to completely rush B, don't stop, which may not even be a good idea in the first place. Generally, on overpass, you're going to have three players uh, playing at bomb site B. If we notice on the CT side, there are actually three players pushed hard into the site. One of them, C, actually starting to flank. That's the one who eventually knifes him. Instead of one player playing balcony. So they have hard stacked at bomb site B. Now, you can't really predict that, but at the end of the day, sometimes not really a good idea to just charge into bomb site B. Now, the bomb actually started to rotate back, but it's a little bit too late. Oh dear, death gonna happen. Now you notice he's got his pre-shoots down. He's trying to hit this player, but what he's doing here is he's engaging in a fight where he has a little bit of a disadvantage. He also has a time disadvantage. Wow, I just noticed something. This guy looked like he was gonna come up behind and kind of back him up, and he would have seen the CT pushing through. Oh no. Oh no! Oh n oh no! Are you sure this is an eagle game? I'm a terrorist and I want to take bomb site B on the first round of Overpass. Now Overpass is a map I've personally been having some trouble with, so I've been looking into it a little bit closer to try to get more into it and try to learn some of the smokes, flashes, and stuff to throw. So let's say you're on that first round, you only have 800, what can you do? 200 for a flash. 200 for another flash, we're up to 400, we have 400 more, let's get a smoke grenade. We could also get a Maltov, which would also be lovely for Maltoving off the uh, the barrels. But let's just stick with this double smoke, um, or double flash and a smoke strategy and see how it goes. So, now while you're playing with a group of people, if you see everybody buying armor and saying, I'm gonna be Frag King, GG, um, you can be the guy who says, I'm going to purchase the utility and try to help make the play work, right? Now, let's say your team is pushing out here. You want to make sure you're not first here. They're pushing, and they're just going to run into bomb site B. How do you support them with what you've purchased? Um, the first thing that I like to do, run up to this spot right here, and we've got two flashes we can throw to sort of assist our players pushing through. If they're entering the pipe, or as soon as they get to the pipe, you can throw this one. Look at this straight thing. Look up to the top of the bridge and let go. Now let's go look at this flash. This flash is really good for dealing with the player who's playing here at these barrels. Like notice, look, everywhere he tries to hide, he's gonna be visible to that thing. This will also hit a player who's playing in this position uh, for demonstration purposes. Actually, that went way down there, Never mind. Anyway, that will hit that player. Um, and as your teammates are pushing in, uh, 
it actually won't hit your teammates as they're pushing through this area. So your teammates won't get flashed. Those enemies in those positions will get flashed. But you're like, but wait, Warrell, there's plenty of other spots they could get killed from, like somebody standing right here or somebody playing this pillar or all over the place. Um, that's why you have the second flash. You can throw two at the same time. The second one is probably more commonly thrown. You stand in the same spot, and then you just aim at uh, this sort of cross beam area on this thing. So look at monster and look up to that and just let go. Just a standing throw. It's really easy to throw. Uh, let me show you where that one goes. It goes up here. Now, if if the, look at where this hits, like everywhere. It's far enough out, so if a player's playing here, they're going to get hit by it as well. That's actually a pop flash to this guy. Um, really great one. This is also great because as your players are exiting the pipe and working on the site, this is only going to like little bit flash your own teammates. So it's not actually going to fully flash your own teammates. Let's try and get this for demonstration purposes thing to work. So I'm, I'm entering, see? Boom. Just a little bit of a flash to your teammates, but let's get the, that's kind of where it was. If I'm playing this spot, boom, full flash. It's great. Those two flashes can get your team in. Now, you still got this smoke left, so your team's working on the site. You've pushed in here. You've got the smoke out. Nobody's gone into water, right? So you can take the smoke out and throw it here. Now, that'll block off this area so that you'll probably be carrying the bomb too since you have to do everything. You can run in and plant the bomb without worrying uh, about players at the water pushing you. But you still have to have a player sort of stand in this position and watch the smoke because a lot of times CTs will push through that smoke. Now one thing that this player didn't really keep 100% control of was if a player was pushing through water behind him from here, like nobody was watching this spot, right? If your team's entering through here, you have to keep mindful of the places that the enemy team can flank you. Now what a, less common is what happened where the player will actually push through short and go all the way through here. That's not very common, but a lot of times, especially on this first round, You'll have a CT player playing a spot like this and holding this spot. And if he hears that something's going crazy on over here, he's going to jump through here, kind of clear this spot, and he'll be like, oh, they're not taking here? I know. I'm going to flank them. And he'll start going through the pipe. Now, so when a player, after you, like, take the site, you plant the bomb and stuff, make sure a player starts watching your back. You can stand in this spot. You're kind of safe from a lot of the different areas that CTs can push. And then you can peek this spot and kind of play monster after you've already taken the site. So, quick recap, kind of the big point. You can be the support player. You don't have to all buy armor and go for fraggy fraggy shoot shoots. So our hero had a question about this round. This is round number three. You'll notice that on the second round they bought, they weren't able to make anything happen, so they have to full save on this round. And it, you, what can you really expect to happen? What can you really expect to do on a round like this where you don't really have that much to work with? Well, I'll tell you, looks like you guys got P250s, which means you actually could get some frags. And uh, kind of a win scenario here is maybe stealing a few guns or getting a bomb plant for that extra money. What happens, though, is that they charge directly into a failed smoke on the CT side where they're watching this very tiny little gap. Please mind the gap. That was quite a spectacular failure on their part, and it could have gone a lot differently. If we look at the map, they this was the strat. They just kind of tried to run in here. We noticed that the CT tried to smoke this off. There's a little bit of a gap here. You kind of have to expect a CT to be holding that gap, and like everybody kind of peeking that exact spot, not really going to work out super well. Also notice that they had absolutely no utility, no nades on that one, not even a single flash to throw over, or maybe a smoke to throw onto the site. If they had a single smoke they could have thrown down, one player could have kind of ran through the smoke uh, from the CTs, ran through this smoke, and then planted it. That takes really quick thinking. Another thing that went wrong is notice they're continuing to do this three-player stack on bombsite B. Part about playing this game at a higher level is being able to identify that kind of stuff. And during the first two rounds, they at least during the first round that we watched, they definitely had an opportunity to identify that weakness. Now, normally, you're not going to stack all three players into the site like this. Um, that's sort of a gamble on the CT's part. Uh, rather, a lot of times they'll keep a player up at balcony to help with the B and hold off the B push so he can rotate very quickly back to A. What they could have done is maybe played the map a little bit more after identifying that. If they got a pick on a player A, they know that these players are going to try to scramble to get a rotate, and during that period, they're a little bit vulnerable and something could have happened. They could have maybe pushed into short at that time when this one player said, oh man, I got to get over to A. Or they could have just powered into bombsite A. A lot of hypotheticals here, but I think the strat of just charging into B like that 
without utility and without the plan of let's get the bomb down or something like that, it's sort of just throwing that round away. And while it is kind of a throwaway round, you don't want to just not try to do something with it, even just trying to catch a player off guard. We noticed the CTs were pushed pretty far forward here. If you killed one of those guys and stole their gun, that is a massive, massive advantage over just trying to push into bombsite B, unless you're pushing into bombsite B to get the bomb plant for that money. Now our hero had some questions about lurking on bombsite B. We see him playing this spot. I would suggest one player to watch who does this really well, sort of study how they play this position, is Seized from Navi. Really good player for this. He's gotten a lot of clutch plays off of this position. And he has some questions about different flashes that you... Oh, wow! A Pokemon! Quick! Get your phone out, kids! We're gonna catch the little Pokemon! Now, you know I normally say this, but I'd like to give a big, genuine thank you to Heil. He did a great job with the write-up. It looked like he really actually wanted to improve at the game. So, great guy. Thank you for that. It's the only way I can make this series if people send me write-ins like he did. Now he's just... Now he's just indifferent to the whole thing. Just indifferent. I forgot about that bomb. 